our annual meeting presentation by Tim Paul. Um, he's going to present on Werner's history and uh, a little bit maybe about his uh, ex extensive collection. Um, so Tim, whenever you're ready, feel free to start. All right, well, we're gonna share a screen with you here. We're gonna do a little bit of Werner's uh, then and now within 10 miles of the museum. Give everybody a little bit of history uh, of what it looked like then and now. So it's time for Werner's. There's a good, nice clock there that you can see. And uh, we'll go on to the next, uh, how do you become a Werner's expert? Well, that's me there at uh, age three. You'll see a Werner's in my hand. <laughs> my grandfather over here, uh, typical of our family, there's Werner's on the table along with Stroh's beer and a, and a bowl full of better made potato chips on the table. We're gonna take a little tour here of the local area. And for many of us, uh, uh, who grew up in Detroit or whatnot, uh, we would come out Northwestern Highway and you would hit uh, 14 mile in, in Northwestern Highway and, and uh, basically the entrance to West Bloomfield. And you, you would either go straight north to, uh, to Orchard Lake or you would go uh, west, uh, north and west to uh, Wald Lake. And so that's where we're gonna go on the next adventure is to a, a Wald Lake Amusement Park so go ahead and yeah. Oh, well, here, here's uh, Northwestern Highway at 14 Mile. Uh, Dunham's Bait and Tackle was where we used to stop at, at that uh, entrance. And you can see, I can remember there was a Werner sign painted on the side of the building, similar to that in the photo there. And this is what it looks like today is uh, where Snipes is. And Dunham's of course still has a presence on the corner, but now across the street and, and they've been there since 1937. And uh, here's some Werner's memorabilia from uh, uh, those type of picnics and things. This is a Werner's bait box uh, that uh, we have, and then a couple picnic coolers that sometimes you'd see, but we'd stop there and you'd get the bait and, uh, and uh, a cold Werner's at the, uh, at the Heading west then to Wald Lake, that's the Wald Lake Park there, and you'll see a similar map uh, to what we have, and that's how people will be directed out to Wald Lake. This is a, actually a Pontiac uh, uh, advertisement for Wald Lake Park, Michigan's Picnic Wonderland, that you'd head out there. And of course, the Wald Lake Casino was there, and this is what it looks like today. It's just an empty, uh, empty. Uh, it's a park, park grounds, in, in a, in front of the uh, where the Wall Lake Casino was. But what was important about that was, in terms of my Verner's collection, uh, there used to be at the old uh, Wall Lake uh, Park there in 1974, 75, there was a flea market. And then uh, uh, these were the first two bottles that I had in my collection, which now is over 600 pieces. But uh, we got these uh, Verner's embossed bottles at the flea market there that say Detroit's drink or deliciously different embossed right in the glass with the Werner's uh, emblem VAG in the bottom of the glass and paid all of 25 cents a bottle at that time. And that started this, this collection, 1974. So then heading uh, Northeast from uh, West Bloomfield or, or from Wald Lake toward uh, through West Bloomfield and toward Orchard Lake uh, a lot of people remember Shorty Hooks as uh, cabins that were right on Pine Lake. And the uh, picture is kind of neat because it says uh, identified as on Highway 218, which I guess was Orchard Lake Road at Pine Lake at that time. Then heading further northeast from Orchard Lake and on to Bloomfield Hills, uh, James Verner Sr. had an address at 707 Long Lake Road which today is the site of the George P. Day School at Telegraph and Long Lake. And that's the entrance going back to the school. And if you walk uh, back along the trail behind there, you'll actually come out on a place called Werner Court. Uh, that's in the subdivision uh, behind there. Then uh, 
heading west and south on Lasser, uh, you'll go to the Werner Vaughn house. A lot of people are familiar with this house. It was actually built in 1837 to 1839. There's a picture of it today. Uh, uh, that was actually the subject of a tour back in 2011, uh, 10 years ago. Uh, but uh, what a fabulous building there. We get some more photos here next. The view looking north in the carriage house uh, there on, on Lasser Road, uh, just north of uh, Long Lake. Uh, then heading south on Lasser toward Lone Pine, uh, you'll come subdivision there at 4805 North Harsdale and this is James Verner's the second house it's actually called Magnolia Terrace and there's how it looked in the past and was it was actually built in 1926 uh, by a lumber baron and then uh, he lost the house in the depression and and the Verner's family owned it from 1930 to 1954 and that house is still there today uh, Jay Wetzel a former GM uh, a vice president and president of Saturn Motor Company uh, uh, still lives there today uh, in, in that house. And you can see that today. And then subdivision there off of Long Lake actually has this nice sign uh, for Werner Estates is the, uh, the subdivision that's uh, back in there now today. So all this history of Werner's is right here in the area within 10 miles of, of the museum. Then heading west, uh, uh, to Telegraph and heading north, um, the, the uh, building on Old Telegraph Road there is uh, uh, service uh, service master. I think it's called. It's a collision shop today, but that was actually the Verner's transportation garage. And you can see here a picture that I took. I think it's 1985 is the date on the photo. The gas pump actually says gnome juice on it. And that pillar right there is on the right hand or left hand corner of the building today. That gas pump is long gone, but uh, that's where the uh, the Verner's transportation garage was right at Old Telegraph there. And that's just uh, north and the opposite side of the street from uh, the Home Depot there at Old Telegraph and Orchard Lake Road. So then going on further west, uh, on Orchard Lake Road to Saginaw Street in Pontiac, you can see five South Saginaw. There's the Verner's, uh, uh, what do I call it, soda fountain. And that building is still there today. And you can still see the intricate glass work in the second floor uh, there. The building in between that and the what was then the Eagle Theater uh, back in the 40s is, is still is a nightclub there today and Crowfoot nightclub is just to the left of that. So that's the uh, that's the tour, the Verner's tour of the local area. And then uh, if anybody has any questions or anything, I have over 600 pieces of memorabilia. I can stop sharing here. Yeah, you can show them. Uh, some other things, but here's some information on the Burners Club if you're interested in joining the Burners Club or uh, uh, if you have any uh, information on Burners items that you can send along uh, my email address. I have a question. May I ask a question? Sure thing. Go right ahead. All right. My name is Larry Boyd. I grew up in Detroit. Um, my mother was a nurse and she swore by Verner's in terms of when you caught a cold and she would <laughs> warm it up and put lemon in it. Right. Also during Thanksgiving and Christmas, especially Thanksgiving, she would base her ham in Verner's. And we used to go to Saunders ice cream um, confectioner, they call it at that time. And one of the highlights was the Verner's float. My question is, where is the Grenome sign they used to set on the corner of Woodward and Warren, I believe? Well, that was dismantled when they when they tore the plant down. And uh, no one had a lot enough space for it at that time to preserve it. So it was uh, dismantled and destroyed. Yeah. I thought it was once... Um, 
I thought it was out at the old state fair at one time with the uh, with the Schaefer stove. So therefore, it's been dismantled. It's, it's no longer in existence. That's my understanding. It's gone. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Let me show you some uh, things you mentioned. The heating. Right. You mentioned the heating that Verner's actually made. You can see the Verner's label on there. They made kits that you could heat up like a tea jug uh, and, and heat the Verner's ginger ale. Uh, for treating your cold and whatnot. And a lot of people don't know that James Verner was actually a pharmacist and he was the first licensed pharmacist in the state of Michigan. His license is number one. License number one is licensed pharmacist. But uh, they, they actually make these heated, heated uh, items. And then they had uh, uh, glassware as well, cups. Uh, for putting the hot burners into. Yeah, yeah I was and, uh, We have a, a comment that uh, the flat porcelain signs on the north end of the building is at a store called Pure Detroit. Um, but he says that the huge sign was, was indeed scrapped. Yeah, the huge sign was scrapped and, and yeah, the gnome from the side of the building is actually uh, in the Guardian building in downtown Detroit inside there and there's a store inside the Guardian building that has the gnome's head from the side of the building on it at, at the Guardian building in downtown Detroit. So you can go in there and see that, the gnome's head. I yeah. have a question here. Yeah, is that actual ginger root? It gives the taste of burners, and do they still use it, it's, or is it synthetic taste? Well, that's a good question. Uh, the company has been acquired. It used to be aged four years in wood, and then a few years ago, they changed it to just aged in wood. And there's actually some bottles that you can get that say aged three years in wood. But yes, the, the actual ginger root that was aged for the, uh, for the syrup. Uh, and does it have medicinal or curative purposes? <laughs> you have to ask your doctor. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. those are claims they make. Like at one time, Coca Cola had actual cocaine in it. You know, right. it was a stimulant, but it's long gone. So. Right. Yeah. I still drink well, burners when I have an upset stomach, so I still swear by it. Yeah, we all do. I've seen signs around Detroit that say COVID-19. We're not afraid of it because we drink burners here. <laughs> well, um, when I travel, because you can't find burners a lot of places out of state, it's excellent for indigestion. I tell you, if you get gas or something like that, uh, as I said, my mother was a nurse. She said, you got to drink burners real cold. Yeah. And, you, and you know how the bubbles pop up and you can barely right. drink because they hit your nose? Right. Uh, she said, she would hold, hold my nose and just pour it down. And <laughs> in about 10 minutes, you can feel the gas just floating out your body. So <laughs> she's just an old Southern nurse who swear by it, cooking, uh, medicinal purposes, um, um, just a good drink. And today, I still keep Verner's here at the house in case I get indigestion. And I like it. Jim, yeah. I'd like to ask, uh, what is the significance of the, of the little character, the, the gnome? What, uh, what, what is, do um, you have any well, background on that? Well, they, the, the rumor is, and you know, Verner's was aged four years in wood because James Verner actually formulated his ginger drink, put it into oak barrels, and then went off to a, the Civil War. And then we came back from the Civil War is when he, un, you know, uncast, if you will, the syrup and made the first uh, soda in the United States is the claim in 1866. And so, uh, uh, early on, it was thought that the gnomes made that you know the syrup during the time he was gone, but uh, you know it wa wasn't always used. Uh, some of the uh, I'm just going to walk over here and grab a bottle. 
uh, some of the early, uh, this is a paper labeled bottle. And, and if you look real close, they actually have like a delivery boy instead of the gnome on that, uh, on that label. So the gnome kind of came later as part of the story, but uh, uh, some of the early bottles like this one had, uh, had a delivery boy on the label rather than the gnome. Very rare to find those, They're still intact. Were the Verners uh, Scottish, Irish? What is their cultural background, you know? I, I don't know that. I don't know the answer to that. It's a good question. Um, Bill, go ahead and, and ask your question. <laughs> um, just to add a few things. Um, at Service King stations, they were bought out, uh, they bought out Autometric. Right. And, uh, yep. so, and uh, geez, I, now that you mentioned, I saw a picture, uh, it said Verner's at that corner. And the other thing I want to add, because everybody that I see knows Paul Lipson, his father had a uh, drugstore in Detroit and got burned by the riots. And his, um, the video is Paul taking the video that they use in that movie 67. Well, after the riots and he lost everything, he built a Dairy Queen right next door to that Wald Lake uh, amusement park. There was a Dairy Queen right next door. And, and since we all know Paul Lipson, his, uh, his father owned the Dairy Queen where he showed that Wald Lake amusement. I, I never saw it, it was tore down. And, or I didn't pay attention when I went by, but I just wanted to mention that, add that uh, there since we all knew Paul. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well. Here's, here's one of my older bottles and most favorite, unopened, 1951. I just had a birthday yesterday, uh, 70 years old. So uh, my 70 years old Verner's is right here in the bottle, but I, but I, I don't feel like I'm gonna drink it. <laughs> but I still have that with the 1951 bottle cap on it. Uh, so. And if you'd like to see some uh, other Verner's buildings that are around that are still in use, the Verner's uh, soda fountain that was in Flint, Michigan is still uh, on Saginaw Street in Flint and it's a Bill Thomas Halo Burger today. And the adjacent uh, was a furniture store building has a huge mural on the side of the building showing the gnomes rolling kegs and making the the ginger ale uh in the in the flint area and that building is still there and it's still in use today it still has the v's on the on the building on the outside and you can go in and see what a soda fountain looked like in the in the 40s if you will 30s and 40s at that time and it still exists that the one in pontiac there is part of the crowfoot nightclub that I mentioned and you can go over there and take a look at that but there's nothing uh, on that building that says burners other than you can see that that window treatment and the second floor uh, of the building there I was involved I was involved in a, a Verner's mural restoration uh, back in the 80s and uh, I think it's Sun Beverage Company now that owns Verner's or at that time did and we approached them to uh, make a donation and they get, came in with $25,000 donation for restoring. Actually, we bought the building. It's the Greater Flint's Arts Council now. But they came in with a 1937 suit. It was a, a person suit of uh, a gnome. And uh, we received uh, the check from the gnome and we drove through Flint with a convertible top down in November. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good but, story. Uh, to the Greater Flint's Arts Council, uh, it's well worth it. And you can see the mural. It's a full building width, you're right. Yeah. It's hey, a beautiful, Tim, beautiful mural. Yeah. Tim, was Verner's a Detroit product? Oh, yeah. Michigan product. Detroit product. Oh, no, Detroit right? product. Yeah. Right downtown on the river. In fact, oh, uh, when, when the, river. yeah, when the, uh, when the Renaissance Center was built, I had a neighbor when we lived in Wald Lake, I had a neighbor that was a construction worker on that site and he would bring me back bottle caps and things from that site when they were digging the foundation for the Renaissance Center. And that's right where they were throwing old bottles out in the back of the 
back of the building. And if you look at photos of the Detroit River, the Boblo docks and whatnot, the, the, uh, the Verner's plant was right there. And you can see that big sign that they had on the face of the, uh, above the building uh, right there from the Detroit River. And then it moved when, when uh, well, I'm trying to think of what building went in there first, but it moved up Woodward Avenue uh, to Warren where you saw it the second time. That was their big bottling plant there. But they had bottling plants all uh, around uh, local areas and whatnot. And probably the most interesting one that I found was in Hersey, Michigan. And uh, here's a bottle here from, from Hersey, Michigan, which is uh, up towards uh, Cadillac area, um, middle of the, of the mid and heading north. And uh, uh, there's a bottling plant, that, that building is still there and, it's, and, and people have converted it into a home. And there's a, it's a residence now, but it was the county courthouse uh, <laughs> after it was the Verner's building. And uh, interesting enough, the, the reason I found out about this place was, uh, here's a bottle cap I'm gonna try and show you. It says Verner's and uh, it's called Squeeze Strawberry Soda. And you look at the, it said Verner's, Verner's Hearst, Michigan. And so I went looking to find out where in the world was this strawberry squeeze drink made and, and found out uh, sure enough, there was a, bo a bottling plant in Hersey, Michigan. So, yeah, I, um, when I used to have family to come into town, especially, especially during Thanksgiving, and we always had the parade, as you know, downtown going down Woodward, it always went past the Gnome. That was a big, big deal to people and it was it was one of the most beautiful signs I ever seen where the Ganon was pouring burners and the lights would just go and go into the mug, you know. Um, I really hate to see we lost that. I mean, we've lost a lot of um, historic things like the Schaefer stove, the, uh, some of you might be too young to know about that. Um, the, um, uh, Stroh's Brewery um, signs and the big vats that sat on Gratiot Avenue. Um, it, it's a shame that we couldn't have put all that stuff out there at the Michigan State Fair and they had it preserved, you know. Yeah. Well, here's an old recipe book from Werner's and there's your recipe for for baked ham a la Werner's. <laughs> there you want to make one for next Thanksgiving or for Easter, you got the recipe right there for baked ham a la Verner's. Paul, did you have a question for Tim? Oh, you're on mute. There you go. Yeah. Uh, anybody hear about the drink called the brown cow? Well, when I was a caddy at Detroit Golf Club in Hamilton back in 69 to 70, you know, at the ninth hole, you'd have a brown cow, either a double chocolate, which was two chocolate milk, but a brown cow was a 50-50 mix, Verner's and chocolate milk. So yeah. it, it puts a nice fizz to it, so you should try it once in a while. But, you know, it's a, you know, like a champagne kind of taste to uh, chocolate milk, which is, you know, you know, and I did it a few times lately yeah. just for that memory. And yeah. you know, it was a good drink as a caddy. How do, you, how do you like this one? Chocolate Verners. Chocolate, chocolate Verners. They made it. They actually yeah, bought yeah. it. Yeah. That's probably Verners. a 50 50. Yeah. They actually bottled it. Chocolate Verners. How about that? Nice, delightful fizz. And I, I always usually opted for it over just a double chocolate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As a caddy, when I used to make $4 a round plus a dollar tip at the Detroit Golf Club. Yeah. Okay. That's it. In honor of you today, Tim, I am going to go out and find some Saunders ice cream <laughs> and make myself a Verner's float. That was the original Saunders ice cream and the Verner's float. And you could substitute the Saunders ice cream with the Stroh's vanilla ice cream if you didn't have Saunders. I'm, I'm going to show you a, 
ice cream container. I don't know if you can remember this at all, but Saunders actually made Werner's ice cream. Very rare uh, container, but uh, they made Werner's flavored ice cream with the gnome right on it. How long and did they do that? Well, this was, I'm going to guess this, it's, it has a barcode on the side of it. So, you know, it was fairly recent, probably within the last, uh, uh, before they were acquired by Marley, uh, Saun Sanders uh, uh, made that ice cream. So probably in the, in the 90s. And then just last year, there was a, another attempt, Hudsonville made a, uh, what they called the comeback cooler. And it was supposed to be Werner's flavored ice cream, but it, I have to tell you, it was really bad. It was, <laughs> and it disappeared about as fast as it came out. It said a limited time and they showed the, uh, uh, they didn't use the name burners, but they showed a wooden barrel on the thing there. And it was supposed to be comeback cooler for Detroit comeback with sweet ginger ale. But uh, if you've ever had a, uh, a, a ginger candy called Reed's Ginger Candy, where it's a very spicy ginger, that's what was kind of in that. And it really didn't, I don't think it was very flavorful and it didn't taste like Werner's at all. Whereas the other Werner's ice cream uh, tasted, tasted like Werner's, uh, like a float. Yeah, I was thinking I had that too, because, you know, we saw it in the store and we just wanted to try some and uh, it was be nasty yeah, yeah yeah it was not yeah. good just get vanilla ice cream with some with some burners poured over it That's yeah right better. go ahead and do that and then here's yeah. a, here's an old burner soda fountain yeah yeah growing up as a kid all the burners if you wanted a burner's float they were always at a drugstore and they had the nice ice cream counter they had the nice chairs right. you could never just go into a regular store the ice cream um the Vernus floats were normally at a uh, uh, pharmacist or, or a drugstore, as they called it back then, or either at Saunders. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty special to go in there, you know, um, to sit down and have a Vernus float. Mm -hmm. What was the origin of the Boston cooler? Because that's, uh, we used to have the Boston coolers all the time. Yeah, well, that's what they called the uh, Verner's float was a Boston cooler, and, and a, a lot of people think that it has to do with the fact that the neighborhood that was the best neighborhood in Detroit at one time was the Boston Medicine uh -huh. District. Yes. And so that was the upscale, where you went to get an upscale Boston cooler was the Boston Medicine District of Detroit. Uh -huh. And... Uh, which were, you know, the Woodward and Warren areas right close by to that. Uh, that so when you went, you know, you remember the, the, uh, uh, see if I can find it here. I got another one. Ah, here we go. Here's another one for you. This one also made in uh, Hersey, Michigan. Oh, yeah. I remember Uptown. Yeah. Remember Uptown? Mm -hmm. Yes. When you were going up Woodward Avenue from Detroit, if you were making it, you went uptown and that's that was always, again, the Boston coolers. And as you moved up Woodward Avenue, you were getting into the high district of Detroit, heading toward Palmer Park, and then eventually the Birmingham and Bloomfield Hills. And of course, that's where we just took the tour uh, where the Verners family lived was up there in, uh, in Bloomfield Hills, not far from where we're at today, so. Is that eventually, Uptown became the Tom Club um, uh, soda? No, I don't think so. I think Uptown no. actually ended up, this one was bottled by Verner's in Hersey, Michigan, but it ended up, I think, Uptown being a Fago product. Ooh. Yeah, that was a Fago product. Um, we've got two, two uh, one question and a comment, Tim. Uh, the question is about the wooden airplane that you've got hanging behind you. Uh, oh. They wanted to know uh, what its significant what significance was and where it came from. Well, it, it was just an old wooden plane, and I, I managed to find these plastic. Uh, they were actually from a uh, a uh, a Verner's pop machine. The labels from a Verner's pop machine, and so I put them on there like it was a flyer on an old airplane. It just <laughs> hangs here in the. Nice. Well, if you saw the gnome crossing sign, that's what we call this area of my basement. <laughs> 
home crossing. And then I think I've got 39 different, 39 different bottle openers that have burners on it. Uh, they made quite a bit. People today don't think anything about having to open a pop top or whatnot, but back in the day, finding them, uh, uh, having uh, uh, burners, uh, uh, can opener, you know, or bottle opener. And here's one here from the 80th anniversary, which would have been uh, 1946, I believe. Okay. 1866 to 1946 with the 80th logo on there. Okay. Is Vernon's part of Pepsi Cola now or? Cola? No, they're, they're actually uh, headquartered now in Plano, Texas. And I believe they're the part of what's known as Cadbury Schweppes mm -hmm. uh, is, is who owns uh, Verner's today. It went through a number of ownerships uh, uh, starting, uh, if you look at some older um, Verner's things, if you see it with an apostrophe in the word Verner's, that was when the Verner's family owned it. And then after that, the apostrophe was removed around 1966, 67. It says cured Dr. Pepper. Cadbury Dr. Pepper? Yeah. Keurig. Keurig Dr. Pepper owns it today. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Tim, I, I see your collection there. How much of a collection do you have just in one area or is it your living room, dining room? Oh, no, it's my, it's my basement and it's uh, quite an extensive collection of over 600 pieces of... of uh, okay, just, just your basement then, eh? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's in my basement and... and my my daughter is giving you the tour of the, of the, the thing. I I managed to uh, if you remember uh, uh, in Wald Lake there was a jewelry store called Erlen's Jewelry, and when they closed their business, I bought all the wall cases from Erlen's Jewelers, and uh, so I have them displayed. Those items displayed in the Erlen's Jewelers cases. Yeah, how's your wife and family? Are they okay with this, or do they think, well, that's just your deal and your insanity or whatever? Well, the, the good the good news is everybody loves Werner, so uh, okay, yeah. It's not hey, like Tim? Democrat Republican. It's a Werner's Coke, or yeah, they're all they're all on board with Werner. Eh? They're all on so, board with Werner. Yeah. Eventually, Tim, what what are you going to do with your collection? You're going to donate to the DIA or some type of uh, institution uh, like that? Probably not. Probably not. There, I mean, there, there's a, quite an extensive club. You know, I mentioned Burners uh, uh, Club at Yahoo.com. If you wanted to join, there's quite a number of people that have huge collections of ginger oh. ale. I'm not the only one uh, by a long shot, and not the largest collector by a long shot in terms of uh, collecting things. But it, like I say, it started from those two bottles that I got at the Wald Lake Flea Market. And uh, 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 so that's, you know, back in those uh, days, you know, I was buying this stuff for 25 cents, 50 cents a dollar a piece. Now it's amazing what some of the things bring. That clock that you saw, I think that that's 350 to $400 now for that clock. Uh, the mm. clock, so. Do anyone remember, um, if you grew up in the Detroit area, there was only two ginger ales. It was... Um, uh, Canadian Dry yeah, and, and and Burners right. and Canada dry. oh Canada Dry yeah, yeah. Right. Canada yeah. Dry right yeah. what did I call it Canadian, Canadian. Canadian Dry okay yeah. Canada Dry and um, it was a distinct yeah. difference in taste correct mm -hmm. yes I can't stomach Canada Dry yeah Canada Dry is tough no I tried it because I think I had I'd gone grocery shopping and I needed burners but they were out so I thought oh I'll just try this Canada Dry and I still have five of the six pack left because I won't drink it <laughs> um, yeah, I think Canadian Dry is or Canada Dry is sort of like diluted taste where uh, uh burners is like full body I got a question for Tim. Yeah. Over there. Hey, do uh, people contact you monthly and said, hey, I got something really cool I want to donate to you? Well, <laughs> no one wants to donate it. They always want to sell it. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So, in fact, I got an email yesterday from uh, 
one of the club members that said there's a, a, a pot machine in Commerce Township that's for sale right now. And and uh, had some very unique Cadillac emblems on the, or not Cadillac, but Verner's emblems on the side that uh, hadn't been seen before, where the Verner's script actually went out beyond the oval. And so, you know, like you asked, they, yes, it happens all the time. And or, or, you know, someone will be tearing a building down in Detroit and, and they'll expose a painted sign that was on the side of it. You know, that first slide that I showed you with that, that one uh, script on the side of the building was what I remember that was on the side of the Dunham's Bait Shop uh, oh, yeah, back yeah. in the day. When, you know, that's how they advertised. They painted buildings, the side of buildings all over. You know, one of the first signs that I have, and it's behind uh behind a collection in the back of the case uh i was driving through flint one day and uh, went past an old neighborhood grocery store and that was the kick plate on the front door of the old grocery store and uh, so i stopped in and said hey would you want to sell that the the kick plate off the door and they told me that i took my hammer and pulled it pried the thing off the door <laughs> It was the kick plate on the door, but the signs show up uh, uh, quite regularly. There's a at the Knight, Knightsbridge Antique Mall in uh, uh, Northville, Seven Mile Road. There's a fellow there that has a, a booth uh, in Knightsbridge, and he has Werner stuff for sale all the time. And he's he recently got a collection from a guy, I believe, in Las Vegas that had moved from Detroit to Las Vegas and uh, and somehow he acquired the collection from that fellow and he has quite a number of Werner's items out there uh, for sale. So it is quite collectible and and you the thing you have to be careful of is the, the things have gotten so valuable that there's companies now that are reproducing the Werner's signs, yeah. Werner's memorabilia. And so you have to be careful to make sure that you're getting genuine and not reproduction uh, items because of the, the value on the burner stuff has gone up uh, so much. You know, there's a lot of Coca-Cola collectors and a lot of that type of thing, but uh, in terms of the burner stuff, it's, it's, it's rather harder to find it, more localized. Uh, but uh, what's really neat about the Werner's bottles is that the, uh, a lot of the bottles have the locations on them as to where they were bottled. And so, you know, one of the things you do is try to find as many of the bottles you can with the different uh, different places on it. And uh, here's one here that's uh, kind of an interesting paper labeled bottle that says. Uh, oh. uh, Piston, Pennsylvania. Ooh, wow. I where that bottle. I have no idea where that town is, but uh, yeah, Piston, many... Piston Pennsylvania. How many it's bottling tough. companies did they have? Well, they, they bottled it all over. Uh, I mean, it wasn't, uh, you know, it, it typically followed where people from Michigan went. So they had bottling plants in Toledo, Ohio, and Tampa, uh, Florida. Uh, I've seen it out in Arizona, uh, uh, you know, because there was a lot of people from Michigan ended up going out to Arizona. And you, you know, but then there's other states where they haven't heard of it at all. You know, what are you talking about, about burners? But, uh, you know, they, but they, they spread out. Uh, they were selling the syrups and, and, and that's how burners was making their fortune by setting up the soda fountains uh, around the country, you know, different soda fountains. I've, I've seen some pictures of uh, places in, uh, in West Virginia, uh, uh, Ohio, uh, heading down that way toward and then Tampa, Florida, uh, different places, Chicago, Illinois, Toledo, Ohio. Uh, some of the interesting cans. Uh, and if you go over to Windsor, if you go over to Windsor, you can find it with the French labels on it, French and English labels on it over in Windsor, Canada. So. Hey. Hey, Tim, I want to say thank you very much for sharing your collection and presentation. I'm going to sign off now and get busy with my chores. But <laughs> um, I'm a big Verner's uh, fan, and I really wanted to see your presentation. And, and everyone be safe this weekend because it's going to get snowy.
cylinder release problem. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Oh yeah, Tim, about the family, you know, what about the patriarch and all that? Do they, where are they buried? Maybe somewhere, uh, the patriarch, do they have a mausoleum? And are they all together somewhere? I, I don't know the answer. That's a good question. I don't know the yeah, answer. Because I recently discovered like on Elmwood Cemetery in Detroit, that old one on Jefferson, I seen the Strolls family is there, you know, mm -hmm. the patriarch and the in this vintage sandstone monument and they're all there together so right there's there's a company that does there's a company that does uh, tours of the uh, detroit uh, graveyards for the automotive barons and they take you on a tour to all the automotive barons grave sites in detroit and i'm sure they would probably know where where the Werner's family is <laughs> yeah for some reason i'm 66 now and i'm more interested in you know seeing people well here's where they ended up and yeah you know like we all end up you know in the ground somewhere and that Elmwood is most interesting for uh, seeing all these turn of the century and it's finely manicured too it's not it's not run down it's right uh, right and the Coleman Young is there and the Dodge family and the Ford family you know quite interesting yeah I think well, Elmwood that, like is I... actually on that cemetery tour uh that Tim mentioned I think Elmwood rings a bell, but I don't remember any of the other names. Yeah, there's there's Mount Olivet, Elmwood, and uh, I'm trying to think the one that's off of Jefferson and Mount Elliott. Maybe it's in Mount Elliott Cemetery. Well, well, that's Elmwood in that area. Is that Elmwood? Is that the Elmwood one? Okay, all right. Yeah. And there's the old Woodmere Cemetery too. I'm gonna make a tour of that in the summer. I gotta check out, it's uh, Private Eddie Slovak is buried there. He's the only World War II soldier convicted of desertion so they moved his body from France to there with his wife which is he was a native of Dearborn which oh that's interesting and it's right here so I'm going to go there even with my edger to clean up his grave while I'm at it so, well wasn't wasn't he executed exactly yeah the one and only soldier in World War II to, in the it was a 1975 movie starring Martin Sheen as Eddie Slovak which is on YouTube, you can watch the full movie. And like I say, his, that, that cemetery is on 4th Street in uh, in Detroit. So it's very vintage, very old, you know, and you know. And then I looked up even on the map. So when I go there, I'll be able to find a grave too. It's a real simple flat stone, nothing elaborate, but uh, yeah, pretty interesting stuff at some of these cemeteries. Uh, Ron mentioned uh, that uh, he was part of a group of newspaper carriers. Uh, at one point, he said that uh, they used to gather at the end of their routes and buy uh, sodas, and they would compare where they were bottled, and the winner uh, would have the bottle from the furthest point, and uh, they would win bragging rights. Uh, uh. So I assume that some of those bottles was uh, was from Verner's. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And then it looks like uh, Hannah found out that James Verner Sr. was uh, is buried at Woodmere. Yeah. Uh, that's what that. I got to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, that one goes back to 1840s or so. And there's a lot of vandalism there too for a while. When copper prices were up, they would even steal those vintage copper doors and brass doors. And now instead of replacing them, they just cement block them up. So it's kind of sad to see that. But you know, those turn of the century doors, real ornate. And then they were just stolen and stolen and sold for scrap back in the 70s and 80s. So it was a lot of, you know, it's sad to see that, but you know, those are all those yeah. fine mausoleums. Right. Oh, we yeah, got so, all the rabbit hats. Yeah. So. James, James Verner's, uh, James Verner II was the, you know, I showed that house that was called Mag Magnolia Terrace in Bloomfield Hills there. And he, he owned that house from, uh, 1930 to 1954, and that's when he passed away. So I imagine that was his. So the question is, where is he buried at? But uh, but that he was the fellow that lived in that house from 30 to 54. So yeah, yeah. I was I was really surprised to find that that, that that's where they they lived. You know, I was imagine them living in Detroit somewhere, but they had places up here uh, quite often. So. Yeah. Uh, somebody else mentioned uh, Tony, who's my mom, 
Uh, she said, uh, thank you for sharing your collection and uh, your knowledge. Um, Burners has been in our family uh, since uh, she was a child and still today they enjoy a nice cold glass of dinner uh, from time to time and they make sure to put their glasses in the freezer uh, before they pour, pour the Verners into it uh, to make sure that it's right. nice cold. Right. Uh, yeah, well, I, my, I still, you know, you, I showed you that picture of me that was 1954 with the Verners bottle. And I still remember someone mentioned about the Verner's uh, fizz going up your nose. I can still remember that's one of my fondest memories it's, uh, being at my grandmother's house and drinking the Verner's and having it fizz up your nose. You know, it's uh, <laughs> one of those things, <laughs> just part of our uh, uh, family history, if you will, you know, that, uh, that that's what happened. And like I say, you know, that, that picture of my grandfather there with the uh, Verner's bottles on the table, a Stroh's beer. Uh, he, they always had Ari's uh, uh, coffee cakes and, and better made potato chips. And the better made potato chips they actually came in a can back then. They would go to the, they would go to the better made store and, and they, you would fill up your can with uh, chips bring a, a returnable can with you. And, and that's how they bought the potato chips right from the factory. Yeah. And so you don't smash the potato chips in yeah. the can. Yeah. Tim, what is, what is your most coveted or favorite uh, item in your collection? The Holy Grail. The, the, the Holy Grail, well, that bottle that I showed you with the paper label on it with the delivery boy, is probably one of the rarest pieces that I have. Mm -hmm. But then I have some other. Uh, uh, here's well, this is this is a better made can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Back in the day, but yeah, uh, yeah, I I do have some uh, some rare pieces that I don't even know if I can get it uh, out. Here's a a Verner's paper labeled. This is the syrup for use in the soda fountain. Oh wow! And it's just 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 the syrup, and it's still intact, never been opened. In the, in the bottle with the Verner's big Verner's cap on. Yeah. And so if your house was on fire, you, you would grab that and run. <laughs> no, I, no. I think it would survive actually. <laughs> then get your wife, tell her to follow you out. <laughs> Tim, you mentioned Ori Bakeries, and that uh, I have a great memory of Ori Bakery. When I was like 15 years old, my neighbor was a manager of the local Ori Bakery off of Springwells, uh -huh. so Springwells and Verner in Detroit. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so she hired me to work for her after school and on Saturday. And the rule was if something happened to fall, you know, a pastry fell on the floor or something, you know, that, that, um, that we could have it, you know. Well, um, more um, um, pastries fell, uh, I think, than we sold to begin with, you know, and I think I gained 25 pounds that summer. <laughs> for <laughs> summer, <Yeah. laughs> I realized I better stop this. <laughs> yeah. Well, you mentioned one of the a rare things is, is, is I do have a case here. Well, on the side, it's an older Werner's case when they first started making cork caps and the, the bottles actually went into the case upside down. So that, and it's the carrier in the case is small holes and that was to keep the corks wet when they put the first uh, pop, you know, uh, safety caps on them. And uh, that, that's a case that's here. And it's, it's got a really old Werner's logo on the side of it before the current script. And uh, that's probably the oldest item that I have. And uh, some of the bottles from back then, I'm gonna show this one. Uh, they have a seal on it and it says register. These were the first cork cap bottles that came out and they had to register. And it says on the back, this bottle contents is under pressure and is registered because the caps would, you know, everybody says, why do they call it pop? Was because the pop would, the caps would pop off. Oh. The, the bottles, but this is embossed right into the glass with the Verner's ginger ale seal on the bottom, BAG, back in the day. 
But uh, so those would date from around 1906 or so with the cork caps on them. Yeah, Tim, did uh, uh, burners have a lot of wearing apparel too? I see you got a hat. Looks like you might have a yellow collared shirt. But yeah, I've, I've got uh, I've got scarves. Here's a there's a they they made all kinds of things over the years that you could buy. It's, Stocking cap, scarves, jackets. I've got a leather jacket from them. Uh, yeah, they, they've had all kinds of things over the years, as you can imagine, shirts uh, and so on, wearing apparel. Uh, Is that what this. you would get from your family for Christmas and birthdays? Yeah. You know? <laughs> yes. They, they yes. know what to buy you. Like my grandfather would bought them a bottle of gin all the time. And yeah. then you would be a burner thing. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a shirt. <laughs> Shirts and jackets and hats and you name it, you find them all over the place, you know, with the different things over the years. Here's a paper hat that actually you made yourself. It came, I don't know where they where they published it, but you they sent it to you in the mail. And it was a flat sheet, and then you folded it into the burner's hat. With the feather not included, eh? Yeah. <laughs> uh Tim. Uh, can we back the truck up a little bit? The word pop that all of us use around this area was from burners and when it was a glass bottle and the pop, the top would pop off. Is that where the well, that's, that's, that, that's where the word originated from because of the sound that the pop made when he opened it. Yeah. The carbonation. Carbonation, yeah. So that's yeah. why it's kind of particular to this area. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I think so. But I mean, you know, you go, what, what's so funny about the, the current Verner's labels is everybody else that sells ginger ale in Detroit right now calls it ginger ale. But if you look at the current bottles, they say ginger soda on them. They don't say ginger ale. And it, I don't know why they did that when the current owners, uh, uh, they made it ginger soda. And, and that's what people call it, you know, other parts of the country is soda, but around here it's ginger ale, but they don't put ginger ale on the bottle anymore. <laughs> and it's just kind of a, an oddity that, uh, that they call it ginger soda on the current bottles. I'm trying to think if I got one here that uh, they're buying. Yeah, yeah, it says right on it, it says the original ginger soda. Is there a patent on that? Was there a patent on the recipe for a while? Well, I yeah, think recipe. it's a secret recipe, but it, the interesting thing, uh, the, the Detroit Historical Museum in uh, was it, uh, 2016, they had the 100th an 150th anniversary of Verner's. At that, the Verner's family actually donated the recipe book from James Berners the first, the Detroit Historical uh, Museum. So they have the original recipe book for how it was formulated uh, back in the day with all that uh, stuff in. It. So it, it's it's probably available to the public. I mean, I don't think it's a secret recipe or anything like that, but they do have the recipe book uh, from from James Berners the first, and it was kept in the family until 100, the 150th anniversary. And it's now at the Detroit Historical Museum. Um, so. For those interested at uh, DHM, there's also an exhibit on the lower, lower level. Uh, it's called Streets of Old Detroit. I'm sure people are familiar with it. Um, but there's a pharmacy that's down there. It's uh, from model after the uh, pharmacy in the 1900s. And there's a, an ice cream bar that would be prevalent in a 1900s pharmacy and it has a big Verner's um, vat, I guess you would call it, uh, on the side. And, and I used to do tours there um, for a short period of time a couple years ago. Um, and on the tour, uh, we always told the story of James Verner and how he was a, a pharmacist that went to war and, and created Verner's when he, or the soda when he, or the pop, when he came back. Um, and so it's funny because even kids, I gave tours to mostly nine-year-olds uh, and they all, they were like, yeah, I drink burners when my st stomach's upset or I have it in my ice cream or, you know, so it's still a very prevalent thing uh, even even now, so. Yeah. 
Well, one of the things I have in my collection from the original Verner's plant in Detroit is a series of signs that when you got on a tour that told you the story about the Verner's ginger ale, and hand painted, hand, paint, hand painted signs that came from there. And there's a series of 13 of them that I have that uh, when the Verner's plant on Woodward and Warren was being torn down, I went over there and I was chasing among the bulldozers, pulling things out of the out of the pi rubbish piles. And I have probably about 50 wooden cases. If I had a bigger vehicle, I would have got more. They were bulldozing the wooden cases uh, uh, when they were tearing the building down. And, and all the, there was a sign store in the back, and a lot of these old signs were in the in the back of the building and they were just being bulldozed. And so as fast as I could get them, I got them and we're lucky, I'm lucky I, I saved them uh, yeah. for whatever reason. And three of the mechanical gnomes that were on that tour, there were three gnomes that actually were like cast iron gnomes that had jaws that opened their mouth open and whatnot. Two of those three gnomes still exist and are in the hands of collectors today from that original from that original tour. So. Yeah, the building was the one on Woodward with all the glass you could see. Yes, right, right. I remember right. that one well. <coughs> Sign. Yeah. Tim, I remember the original building. I was a little girl and um, my mom and dad would, uh, you know, uh, I know that we were going to Bablo and I recall specifically going to, to the old Werner's building. And the other, all those other buildings that lined that street going down to the Bobble uh, yeah. Pier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, I, that's really something. You know how long ago that was torn down? Well, it had to be. Maybe. My, my recollection is it was the late '40s, early '50s mm -hmm. when that was torn down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah when they mm -hmm. were going to build Cobo Hall, and they would we went all the way to the foot. Of the water's edge, so it would were dead end right at the water. Right, right. 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 Also, yeah. uh, they they built the veterans building. That was yes. the first thing that kind of toppled. That that's it. Yeah, there, there was, was the veterans the, building, the, uh, veterans, the veterans building, and the Henry Ford Auditorium right. that were there um, before. I think Hobo was sixty one, so it would have been the earlier, uh, the earlier, uh, you know, forty eight to fifty three type of time frame when they moved up Woodward. So there, there's some good documentation of uh, them having the last you know, burner sodas at the old building down at the foot of Woodward. It and, was uh, very colorful. Yeah, bar. Yeah, it's it's bar. Bar. Yeah. Right, right, right. So yeah, it's all good stuff. So yeah. So, you know, I mentioned, you mentioned other ginger ales and I do have a case of Cadillac ginger ale that was made in Detroit with the Cadillac emblems on it. That, uh, and that was produced in Toledo, Ohio, later Cadillac beverages, but I have Cadillac ginger ale bottles. Uh, Cadillac was a prominent name and I collect Cadillacs also as well as ginger ale, anything having to do with Detroit, but uh, um, I do some Cadillac ginger ale. So there were other ginger ales that were made in, in the Detroit area uh, over over time. Pretty, pretty neat stuff, but uh, yeah. Anyway, All right. well, I appreciate I appreciate you asking me to come and, and present and I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, we, we truly enjoyed your presentation. Thank you, Tim. Okay. Uh, Tim, I'm not gonna go and rob your house. So where do you live in West Bloomfield? You still are <laughs> West Bloomfield. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm I live on the on main main street trail off of Pontiac Trail uh area between Halstead and Old Orchard Trail. Okay. Yeah. So watch out for Paul. <laughs> uh, no, no, I don't. I'm too old to <laughs> acquire stuff. I'm getting rid of stuff, not acquiring it. Yeah, no, I'd be if you have any Verner's things or anything related to Cadillac Motor Car Company, I'd be happy to. You're welcome to come and visit. So, I put my email address on the end of the presentation, and uh, uh, you know you can you can uh, send me an email and be happy to answer it. Uh, 
and and like I say, the the Verners Club. If you're interested in uh, joining, we normally would have an event once a year to go visit some of these places. But with the COVID, we haven't had one in the last couple of years now. But uh, usually around July, we have a, a contest of who can drink the most Verners floats. Uh, and you can see here, at one year I actually took third place. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if, if, you, if you get together with Verner's people, you got to have some floats to go with. <laughs> yeah, one day at your, funeral, at your funeral, you'll have all that big display around you. So. <laughs> I wonder what I'll have, but uh, at least you'll have a point of reference there. So. Yeah. <laughs> this has been fascinating. Thanks. Yeah. So, yeah, and there's, there's a book that's out. And you showed a book. Uh, there's a book on Verner's ginger ale that's that, that you can get. Uh, Keith Witterlick, he's the author. Of it and he's the, the Images of America series. Yeah, and so you can get that book. It's similar to ones that are at your uh, at the museum building there that you see. So uh, it's a really good book on 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 that. And then if you're interested in that uh, the Verner Vaughn Mansion, there's books that are available. There was a tour there. Um, like I mentioned in 2011, it was the designer show, show house and we got to tour the house and, uh, yeah, so it says Vaughn. What's the significance of Vaughn street? It dead ends there right at the, yeah, well, that was the, that was the builder of that house. Oh, in 18, 1837 to 1839, the Vaughn family built that house originally. Yeah, those are some of the finest mansions in uh, Bloomfield up and down that Vaughn Road. Right, right, you know, and, and so that's, they were one of the first families. Now, if you, if you, if you recognize that date, 1837, January 26th, that's 1837, that's when Michigan became a state. So that building was built when Michigan became a state. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. 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 So, and it's still there and it's, it's just a wonderful place if you can get a tour. Oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's high in the hill, you can't miss it. Really yeah. Really impressive, those columns. Right, right. And the Werner family owned it after that. And it's it's kind of like that Magnolia Terrace house that, that was built for a lumber baron. I mean, unfortunately, I can't remember the lumber baron's name, but uh, like I say, it was built in 1926 and then he lost it when the, the at the start of the depression in 29 and that's when James Vernon II bought it in 1930. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see there's the original house, but did they add to it and multiply the space? Well, I can't tell you that. I can't tell you when it was added. It looks like some newer additions onto the old stone yeah, house. It, yeah, it could be. Yeah, you you know, you wonder 1837, that big carriage house that's in the back there probably wasn't there in 1837. You know, that probably came later, but. Uh, yeah, with horses at that time. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Great. Well, uh, I think um, as much as we'd like to just endlessly talk about uh, <laughs> presentation or uh, collection, uh, I think uh, we will wrap up for today. Um, hopefully, at some point in the future, we can have Tim do an in person presentation uh, again so we can. Uh, interact with his collection, um, not in a computer. <laughs> um, yeah, thank and, you. and have a burner's float. Yes. Yeah. Rig, right. you know? Yes. Right. Yes. Actual float. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you everybody for sticking around and uh, having this conversation. Um, and uh, there's some links in the chat if you guys wanted to. Uh, I found the burner's book on Amazon, um, and then I put Tim's email in there also. Um, if you uh, missed it in the presentation. Um, so again, thank you guys for, for coming to our annual meeting. Um, and we look forward to a very eventful and interesting 2021. Yeah, gotta get better, can't get worse. <laughs> right, exactly. All right, well, take care everybody. Have a great weekend. Thank you for watching. Please support Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society efforts at gwbhs.org. Thank you.